Okay. So we are building on what we did last week. So last week we used files from Illustrator to kind of start getting into some simple transition animation. This week we're going to take those skills that we learned as far as creating some basic animations and build our own template from scratch in After Effects. So it's going to be a big day, so don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, remember, there's always that recap that you can come back to. So just like last week, we're going to start out with me doing a demo and sharing all those steps. So take notes as we go. And then we'll have time for that practice and Q&A. If you have not, make sure you download my story template because I'm going to actually walk you through how you use this template to get started. And then I'm going to go back and show you how I built that. Um, so one of my tips before we hop over to After Effects is when I'm animating, I actually like to think of design first. And this was a huge breakthrough for me. Um, because it was like, when I thought of animation and design at the same time, it was like too many options. So I always like to, at the very least, start with a rough sketch that might include some notes for how I want to animate, or I might design something in Illustrator or Photoshop and kind of use that as a general guide for what I then build in After Effects. And that's actually what I did with this one. I didn't create a layered file like I did last week, but I sketched out some ideas inside of Illustrator first and then designed in After Effects. So I always like to have that design in mind first. So I'm going to new share, hop over to After Effects. And so this is the template that you will have opened uh, from the Spark page download. So let's get into just the different parts of this and how you can use this. So we've created this as kind of an Instagram story template and I have some layers and I've simplified these, which is something we'll show you, but this is how easy it is to share out a template. So on this text color layer, all I have to do if I want to change my text color is come up here, grab my eyedropper. I'm going to pick that hot pink and you can see that changed my text color. Same with my lines. I can come in, grab that eyedropper and let's change that to try to get that bluish gray. So imagine if you are the creator, you could share this with someone so they could make a few quick changes and use this template. Same thing with our text layers. I'm going to move this down to where it animates in just so we can see it. Edit my text. And we're going to say, this is a, we're going to drop in a new photo of my fabulous cat. So we're going to call this my fabulous cat. And then we're going to change our story template text and we're going to say, she's a little chubby. It's okay. Now here's the great part. So we want to change this photo. I double click into my asset and you can see I've added a little cue that says drag your footage here. Notice that doesn't appear on the previous one. I'm going to go into my project bin and I've got my cat picture ready to go. It's going to be dragged and dropped, get her fitted, fit nicely in there. Whoops. There she is, filling the whole frame as she does. And now I can close this asset down, and there it is inside the template. So now I can play this through. You can see we have a nice little zoom, we have some text coming in, and there you have it. So you can create these templates and really share it out with non-users with a quick little um, training for them. And then they could 
put in their own content. So that is where we are headed today and that shows you how you can use that template. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this project because we're gonna start with a brand new project from scratch. And let's say, let's, I wanna save it. No, we're not gonna save it. All right. So at this point, we're gonna assume that I'm working from a sketch, I have some ideas. If you recall last time, we did new composition from footage. This time, we're just gonna do new composition. So I'll select new composition. Here's my new comp coming up, and we're gonna call this our Instagram story template. I can spell words right. And our width and height, we're actually going to uncheck locked, lock aspect ratio. We're gonna type in 1080 by 1920. We can leave this at, at 60 frames per second. And I've got it at 15 seconds. We can change that down to 10 if we want to. I think Instagram stories go up to 15. And we can either change or leave that background color. So we're gonna hit, okay. And so you can see we've got the start of our template right here. If I had that, reference image if I had done something in Photoshop, I would just place that in there and then maybe bring the opacity down and literally draw on top of it as I built things. So we're going to grab our rectangle and so you have all kinds of shape drawing tools that you can use right here. Just like with anything, you have a fill and a stroke. So I'm going to do a rectangle and notice I've built in this shape layer. I can open this up and see the size of what I've, what I've created. Now, if you recall, we were at 1080 and 1920. So I wanna make sure it's the same size as the, the one I already created. And I'm going to leave my fill at none. I like my stroke at white. I'm just gonna increase my size here. And you can see, we can start to see that. And, that, and let's just do about 80 on that. Okay, so now we've started layering things in. Now this is where I mention that it's gonna be critical for us to watch the names of our layers. So we're gonna do that kind of at the end all at once. Um, but that, if you start building and get confused, you might wanna do that as you go. So I'm gonna duplicate this exact same shape layer that I have just by clicking on it and hitting Command D. So Command D allows you to copy any of those. So with that Shape Layer 2 selected, I'm gonna change my stroke, and all I have to do is click on this color, um, and that'll bring up my options. If I wanted it to be a gradient, I can Alt-click on it and get those options. You can see there's a gradient. I'm actually going to Alt-click that back to a solid, there we go. And we're gonna make this one, let's go for a dark gray just to start that out. And we're gonna make this 120. So we've got our layers in there and I'm just gonna move layer two below layer one. Let's just change this to even darker so we can get a little sense of it underneath there. Type in 120. Okay, so we've got our two layers in there. And now we're going to start drawing our text boxes. So text works the same way it would in any other program. I'm going to grab my type tool and we're going to have some text at the top, text at the bottom, and then text in the middle. So I can draw my first text box up at the top. 
and we're just going to say text here. Over on the right hand side is where I can change my fonts. And I'm going to use an Acumen Light. I'm going to make that about 80. So these sizes are in pixels. So if you're like, holy cow, Heather, 80 points, what are you doing? Yelling at people on Instagram? Yes, I am yelling at people on Instagram. No, I'm not, just kidding. Um, but that helps me get that styled correctly. I can also get this aligned to the center. So if I'm selected in there, I can move this around, just get that aligned, um, get that paragraph placed in there. So let's go ahead and I can do the same thing we did before. Select my text layer, Command D. And this is gonna be my swipe up text. And I'm gonna bring up my align panel because I feel like I moved that a little bit. So we'll use that in just a second. So this will be swipe up. Now I'm not a fancy blue check mark person that actually gets swipe ups, but I'm gonna pretend I do for the sake of our design. And let's change it from that green, that's obnoxious. Let's make it a nice pretty teal for now. And we'll change things to match the photo here in a bit. Okay, so I mentioned that align panel. I'm just gonna grab my selection tool and I can align that to the composition, to the center. And if I clicked here, it would go in the middle of the composition. I just want it to be aligned um, in the center of the composition, not to this center. Now I will use that for our next body of text. So this one we're going to make a little bit larger. So let's do, and so in addition to typing, I can scrub in my text size. I'm gonna make it about double what we had before. So we've got our blue color. And this time I'm going to align my text, not only to the middle of the composition, but also the middle of that template. So it's dropping right there in the full middle. Now we're gonna add a couple of little fun details to this. So I'm gonna add some lines on the top and bottom of story template. And this is one of those tricks that sometimes I'm just lazy and I don't wanna draw things. Um, so this is a cool trick that'll actually come in handy. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw a box around my story template. And I don't, definitely don't want it that wide. So let's just, we're gonna start at 10. I kind of like that. So again, we'll align that to the center. Whoops. Grab the wrong thing there. Let's get, draw that. Let's back this up for a hot second. Do that within that shape layer, didn't I? There we go. So let's try that again. There we go. Now it's its own shape layer. So I've got that drawn in and we're going to do about 10 pixels. Make that white. Add a little bit bigger. That's good. And I'm gonna align that to the middle. Now here's the trick. So what I want is these top lines, not these side lines. So I am going to basically use this tool to create a mask. So with my shape selected, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and you'll notice then I have this tool, which is Tool Creates Mask. And I'll select that. And so as I draw on this, I'm basically going to be masking out areas. So you see, as I drew it there, I masked out the top. 
Well, what I want to do is mask out the side. So I'm just going to redraw that. And as I use that tool to create a mask, I've created a mask right here. If you look at my layers panel on that layer, and I've masked out the sides of those lines in that layer. So you can see now we just have the bottom and top line. And I could have drawn those and made sure they were balanced, made sure they're evening, even, but sometimes that tool creates mask is a perfect way to change that. We can do something similar with our swipe up. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit. And what I wanna do is create a triangle shape down here. Well, if you look in our tools, I don't have any tool that allows me to create a triangle. Well, I can use the polygon and transform it. So I'm gonna choose polygon. I'm gonna draw my polygon shape. While I was drawing, I'm holding my shift key. Now notice in this shape layer, next to polystar, I can just toggle in there. And in my polystar path, I have number of points. So I'm just gonna change that to three. And now I have a triangle. Now, if I wanted a perfect triangle, I've done a great job of that. But if I wanted to manipulate that, um, I actually want to expand these so that I can modify the actual individual points. So to do that, I'm going to go to layer. And let me find, I'm modifying. I think I've led us in the wrong direction. Sure it's under layer. I lied, it's down here. So I'm gonna right click there and I am going to I hate it when you go in to find something and you can't find what you want. Well, there's what I want. Okay, well, not sure why I can't find what I want on that. I might play with that later and see what, I've, what I'm missing in my training. But I'm just, for now, I'm just gonna modify the whole thing as opposed to individual points and make this a little smaller. So let's do like three for that, two. I'm gonna make this like a gray. And then just like we did before, I'm gonna duplicate that. So selecting that layer, I'm gonna duplicate that shape layer. And I can use my arrow keys to move things down. And then this one is just gonna be a little bit darker. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now is a good time. <laughs> if you've noticed, we have a lot of layers. So I like to have these make some sort of sense so that I have a sense of what type of layers and borders and things that I have. And so I also like to kind of order things um, like, like objects together. So I'm going to go back and you can use this reveal and hide. And this is a good time to start tweaking things. I'm going to tweak that outline. All right, so I'm going to name this. I'm just going to click on that layer. And when I hit return, notice it highlights that in blue. So I'm going to call this my border front. And then this one, hit return, border back. I'm going to move those up to the top. And then this one is my triangle. So I'm gonna call that 
triangle one, and then we have triangle two, and then we have my lines. And then there we have our text. So I'm just going to put these in order that you see it. I'm going to pull this one down a little bit, make sure it's still in the center. Come down a bit. Okay. So I'm kind of liking what we have here. And the other convenient part of this is it allows you to kind of move things together. So I can kind of move those triangles together. I use again my up arrows. So you can see what we're building in here. Now at this point, we haven't animated anything. We just got these blank layers. So now we're going to work on our asset. So we've got our template and we're gonna start a new comp that is our asset. So I'm gonna go file, excuse me, composition, new composition. It's still going to live in here. I am going to lock, and let's name this asset, and we're gonna say drag footage here. Anytime you can add instructions, I think it's great. So there's our values that we had before. I'm gonna click lock the aspect ratio and I'm gonna change some of these numbers. So I'm gonna change the height to 2,500. And the reason for this is I want to be able to drop my photo and then scale it in. And I don't want to scale it over 100%. So this is going to allow me a little wiggle room to scale that. So I'm gonna hit okay. And so here is our composition. Our Instagram story template is over here, but here's our asset. And we're gonna bring in some photos. So we're just gonna hit Command I. And we'll bring in that lovely photo of Camp Anil. And I'm just gonna drop it into this space. And I am gonna need to scale this one up a bit. Actually, do I have, yeah, that's fine. We'll scale this up. There we go. And so I'm going to do a little folder work over here too. So I'm going to do a new folder. And we're going to call this our assets folder. And so our asset drag footage here and our actual assets will all live in that folder. Those type of things help people kind of keep things straight. So I'm gonna close this asset footage down and I'm going to go back to our Instagram story template and I'm gonna bring in this comp at the very back. So you can see there is our asset dragged into the new comp. So again, just like we did before, any user could just come in there and pop their new assets in. All right, so another thing that I like to do is kind of organize with some color. So you can see that each of these layers have different colors and I can recolor them to have them be like similar things, have similar colors. And that's just a visual way to kind of help you when you're over in the timeline to see what you're working with. And that's just clicking that color chip and then you can relabel that however you want. And notice my selection is that same color that I see here and here. All right, so let's look at a couple of different things for animating. So we're gonna go into our border. I'm gonna show you a quick way. So I've got my border selected. I'm going to search for stroke. This is a quick way when you're toggling through to kind of make that decision. So there's our stroke width and it's 80. 
And so we're going to say it's going to go from, we'll start it here. Let's start it at 150. And then down here, let's try it two seconds. We're going to have it be that 80 it was originally. So that animation goes from here to here. So one of the things that we, and this is like we did last week, just going in, making those simple changes, but we're gonna add some skills to it. So here with my keyframe, if I control click on it, I can go to my keyframe assistant and do some easy ease. And that's just going to smooth that transition. Another thing I can do with that keyframe selected, I'm going to pop open my graph editor. So that's just to the left of your timeline. And I can grab this and change how quickly this occurs within that graph and kind of speed that whole transition up. I can also look at different views of that graph and play with that. I can also change that graph curve. So I just click my Bezier curve and I'm just gonna make it really fast at the beginning and then slow down. And when I'm done, I can just hit that graph again. So now, whoops. When we play through, let's get back to the beginning. You can see how quickly now that that's moving. Let's expand this up so we're actually looking at seconds and not frames. Otherwise, I'll be getting confused. So just some additional edits on that. Let's do the same thing for the back border. So I'll select it. I'm going to, again, search for that stroke width. And this time, again, we'll start at zero here. Let's change this to 300. Eyeballing it, seeing how it looks. And then we'll go down a little bit further than we did last time. And now it'll be, say, 150. Okay, so let's just play how that looks. You can see them both changing, that looks nice. So again, we're gonna put our ease on this. We're gonna do, whoops, an easy ease. I'm hoping to show you what each of these look like. And then we're gonna go into our graph editor. And you can see we've already got a Bezier curve on this. So again, same thing. I'm going to pull that out to speed it up. So you can see it's faster at the beginning than it is at the end. So we're taking the same things we did last time, but we're tweaking a little bit of the how we're editing that. Let me just, I'm checking my notes. All right, so another thing we're going to do we're going to do both of our triangles. And so with our triangles, we're going to have those be for our position. And we're going to have that happen at, say, two seconds. They're going to be right there. But here, they're actually going to come Whoops. Down here. So now we have triangle is going to move in, maybe. So I'm not selected on that. Let's try that again. Okay, so there, right there. Okay, there we go. 
It's moving in and that moves into position. I can again play with the eases on those and I probably would, but I'm trying to be a little aware of the time that we have um, so that I can kind of get through and show you the final steps on templating this out. So I will just tweak these. And with our lines, let's have those just do an appearance. So they will be And you always want to be aware of kind of not doing too much all at once. So I'm trying to like pace out where my animations are happening. And some of them are just going to slide in. Let's see what that one will do here. I don't want that to go fast. So we'll have it there. We've got some motion animation and some appearance animation. And so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there and we'll just play through what we have. Whoops. Okay. So we've got our text, we have those things coming in and I have my swipe up come in as well. So the key is at this point, you want your animation to be quote unquote locked in. So at this point, all of my animation is finalized and I wanna show you a trick. If you remember the original animation I showed you, there was a really cool thing where with one click, you would create what's called a controller layer. So we're gonna create a controller layer to change our border color. So I'm gonna to go to layer, new, and null object. This is like putting a blank transparency layer on top of my objects. And I'm going to add an effect. So I'm going to find in my effects panel Oh, here we go. Oops. Things in my way over here. There we go. So there's my effects panel. And I'm going to add a fill effect. So I just typed fill. Here is my fill effect. And I'm going to drag that on top of my null object. So you can see that that null object is appearing up here. So I'm going to go to edit, copy. Excuse me, copy with relative property links. And I'm going to copy that into my borders. Okay, so you can see we've got that to change our colors. So we're going to name this, and we're going to call this our. Order fills. All right. So we'll close that. Back at our composition, how I can use this is I just grab my eyedropper and I can color pick my different colors. And it's going to allow me to change those. Um, to that relative I'm going to actually back this off because I don't want it on that border back. Okay. Call this border front. There we go. So we'll change that. Now you can see it allows me to quickly change my colors relative to everything else. I can use that same technique for my triangles for my lines, for any of that. All I have to do is just repeat that for any primary things I want to do. 
So you notice when I sent that template to you, things were pretty cleaned up. So now I'm gonna clean and up and hide some of these things for you. So what I wanna do is first lock. So I'm gonna lock my border, my triangle, and my lines. Then I'm gonna go shy, and this is kind of like hiding those layers. So I'm gonna hit that little shy dude, and then I'm gonna hit the master shy. Why aren't you hiding? Oh, because I locked you first. Let's try that again. Well, where are you? Let's try all of this again. Okay, so shy you. And then shy, why aren't you shying? Oh, I'm hitting the wrong one. There we go. Now I've shied him. I apologize. Um, but you see how that shortens up my layer list? Now, could someone come in here and have this unshied and start manipulating what you created? Absolutely. But if they're smart enough to find the shy and to unlock stuff, well then bless them, let them do it. All right, so now this template is ready to go. All I would need to share this out for someone to work with is to just do a file save. And then what I, I say for them, let me get this into our folder. Save. Let's do demo. And so now that's saved as a template. And then I will just quickly share with you what that looks like. So all I did was created this .aep file. I can then compress it and zip it and send it out for other people to work with. So I know that was a lot of things and I kind of shortened it up because I was running a little bit longer than I wanted. But what I really want you guys to see there is how you can start building in and creating your own objects right inside of After Effects. And then using some text features, using some very simple things to create a very cool template. Now, if we were gonna render this out, We can just export that, add it to render queue, and send that out just like we did last week. Um, again, these are the things that I just want you to really look at as creating your own comp, drawing basic shapes, playing with text, starting from scratch. I think those and then repeating the animations we practiced are great starts. So I will add our session recap down here and I'll send everyone an email um, when that gets posted today. And then for next week, what we are going to be working on is text reveals. So that might be kind of the handwriting text look or just revealing text. 